let's go maybe a bit more in depth into that specific genus. We, yeah. we know about your fish. Tell us now about Pinoculus. Let's, let's, where do they come from? Uh, what defines them as a genera of, of Loricarids? What, yeah. Where do they like? Where they, do they live? They, they come from, of course, from, so, uh, from South America. Okay. Most of them are from the Amazon basin. Okay. There's just a small group uh, that comes from the Orinoco basin. Um, in the, sci the scientists, uh, or I, I have written an article for Dutch magazine in Germany, and they have uh, published uh, some species groups of Panacolos. Uh, I've given uh, one group, the Orinoco group, that comes from the Orinoco basin, and three other groups from uh, the Amazon basin, a tiger pleco group, like these ones, mm -hmm. The Lyratile Plecos with a elongated yeah. pedangle yeah. and uh, the white point group like uh, Panaculus albimaculatus or uh, Panaculus albivernus that you maybe know to L204. It's, I think, really common. This yes. uh, can, can you strike or some, something? Some I don't like, know the common names. Uh, yeah. Or Flash, flash Pleco, I think. Uh, I, I'm not really good in common names. 204? Yeah. 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 And, um, I've published there yeah, these four groups, and later I've seen uh, when uh, Nathan Luhan and others made a scientific work about this, they uh, nearly have uh, found the same groups, but based on DNA data and not on uh, just what I've uh, seen on the fish. And that was really great that they have nearly uh, found the same, same uh, um, Sorry, I missed the word. Uh, That's okay. Like the, trait or? Uh, no, the, the, the same, uh, builds the, nearly the same groups. They have near, okay. build nearly yeah. the same yeah. groups uh, like me. Just uh, the white point plecos, they have merged in the Lyra tail plecos. That's the only difference. But when you uh, have a look on their uh, 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 family tree, the white point plecos are a small part group of the Lyra tail plecos. So it was not completely wrong what I've done. Okay. And so uh, it was really good to see that my thoughts are also in their work within. Yeah. Now, is there something that, if you, if, you, if you were to pick up a fish, a pleco, that you've never seen before and you pick it up, is there something that defines it yes, as a of panoculus? Course. Of course. Panoculus uh, have some, some characteristics. One is, of course, uh, the not really large size. The smallest one stays around uh, six centimeter, and the largest one will be mm, maximum of twenty centimeter. That is in general for all panaculos. Okay. Then, uh, of course, the body shape looks a little like you know it maybe also from uh, Pecolsia and Hypercystrus, mm -hmm. so you can put them rough in the right direction. Yeah. But and then the, the dentition would change yeah, that. The, yeah. The, the main difference is of course. The tentation, because panaculos have uh, 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 spoon-shaped teeth, like, uh, like like some others also have. For example, Pico um, panaki yeah. and cochleodon or hypostomus cochleodon yeah. group. Um, but there is a difference in the body size and the, in the body shape. So that's the only genus in this small size and with body shape that has spoon-shaped teeth. So it's really easy to okay. identify them. The only problem is when you have a fish in the size of four or five centimeter and have a look in the mouth, at least in my age, yeah. it's, a bit, it's a little problem. <laughs> we need I, one of those little loops. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a problem. When you have a look in the mouth, you, don't, you just see there are some teeth, but you de don't see any details, then it's really hard. Yeah. Now, Maybe a lot of these people, they know plecos as plecos. There's a lot of fanatics out there and, and the real passionate people like yourself, but a lot of people are just kind of general. If they're going to go into a pet store and they're going to find one of these panoculus in the store, you being, I'm going to call you one of the experts on this genre of fish, and you keep a lot of them, what do they need to do to keep these guys successful in an aquarium? It's, it's not so really complicated. Um, you need, of course... Uh, slightly clean water um, with a good filtration system because uh, they are wood eaters and when 
they need of course also bog wood or uh, some other not yes. too hard wood in the tank and when they uh, yeah uh, crap, crap and rest uh, from this uh, wood of course there is a lot of mulm and uh, yeah. other uh, yeah. products they the produce a lot of bio load yeah. yeah and so you need a strong filtration or you have at least to uh, clean the tank uh, regular, uh, regularly that the tank is not have not has too much of this mulm within okay some panacuros like uh, four or three that he, that we've seen before can make really a mm. lot of mulm i think within a week they can make in a, a tank 80 to 40 centimeter uh, i think uh, <laughs> uh, so two or three centimeter mulm yeah. without any problem problem a group of three or four specimen yeah it's no problem so you have so the wood, the wood is a, an essential for these guys yeah. they have to yes. have it for their yes. diet yes it's also good for example offer them caves made by wood because when they are breeding the male all the time sit on the eggs and on the larvae and so he has also the option to eat a little bit of this wood. Yeah. Otherwise, in caves made by clay or so on, he has nothing to eat. Yes. And he don't go out of the cave during uh, take so care of the this particular group, you, you're suggesting that it's more make caves out of wood instead of giving them the, the slate and ceramic caves. Yeah, they are also okay. It's, it's just a little side effect that they can get this. Okay. But for example, L397, another Panacolos. I never have bred them without wooden caves, but uh, there's every species uh, also different. Yeah. Some of them uh, to breed them need uh, really to let let them really calm down, don't disturb them, like uh, Panaculus clastelifera. Uh, That's that bright orange and black yeah. striped one. Yeah, yeah. We'll throw a picture up of that. Yeah. Uh, but also like Panaculus tanki, I've bred in uh, just. Uh, simulate uh, the dry season really really roughly uh, the water level uh, was sinking at least 20 centimeter and my Hamburg mutton filter was uh, not uh, in the standard size uh, but it was uh, going down yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, after this dry season I have uh, refreshed the complete tank make several water changes of 90 95 95 percent and uh, then the fish really feel it's rainy season and they started swim around and were gambling yep. and then uh, the first warning was happened now do you use uh, any specific water parameters that you use do you use uh, reverse osmosis water uh, i'm in the lucky situation that my tap water i come from germany so we have of course really clear cut uh, good tap water it's like a uh, product that, that you can use also for babies and so on okay. it's really high quality and it comes from a mountain region close by me so I have really really soft tap water and can put uh, can use a tap water in all my tanks um, otherwise um, that's decidedly different than here <laughs> yes I think so <laughs> um, but uh, otherwise it's no problem use some RO water but also in a standard uh, tap water, it's not the biggest problem. More is a problem to keep really uh, the water quality stable, that the tanks are clean enough. And when you have harder water, at least make a lot of water changings, yeah. maybe uh, several times a week, that the water is really, really clear and uh, good for them. And then it works. Yeah. Well, our water is so hard. You, drop, you, you splash some water on your foot, you'll probably get a bruise. <laughs> I've realized, I've realized. <laughs> so the water, you're saying the water chemistry might not be as big a factor as most people are thinking. And we're not yeah. necessarily having to mimic the exact water quality, but just real good water changes and maintaining water quality in that way. Yeah, that's, okay? that, that's the most important thing. Now for the genus Pinoculus, do they, uh, you're, we'll show some habitat photos. And I just, do, are, they, are they fast water, slow water? Are they in little kind of no, shallow they're, pools? They're, there's, there's of course a little uh, flow there, but they are not in the strongest rapids uh, okay. like like uh, some uh, ancestral species or others. Uh, it's it's medium flowing water, and of course on uh, large uh, areas with a lot of dead wood. So if we were to flip them busy. over, this one's for you, Daniel. If we were to flip them over and look at the, the the lip structure, the lip won't necessarily be as big or developed. 
with lots of unkali. Got your unkali in there, right? <laughs> They're not going to know that's his fancy word that he kept throwing around, unkali. But uh, they probably don't have a, that big of a, a pronounced bottom lip because it doesn't necessarily yeah. lean it because it's not in that fast of a current. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, like for example, some ancestors with a such large uh, disc, mouse disc, there's no need for them. Okay. That's awesome. You've traveled a lot. Yes, <laughs> yes. Brazil like, is like, Brazil's home. Like that's where you go. That's where you want to be. Because you've been to Suriname. You've been all over the place. But is Brazil where you want yeah. to concentrate your efforts still? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. My uh, most favorite country. It's uh, incredible when you have a look. It's a large Amazon basin. There are so many areas where no other people were until now. There are no uh, search there for fish, and that's what I really like to do. Uh, of course, with the problematics in. Uh, or problems in Brazil. It's not so easy, but um, when you have a good con good contact to a fisherman or to some scientist to be with them on the road, then it's not a big deal to be there. Yeah. But it's a big problem to go alone to Brazil, try to catch fish, try to transport them, and maybe try to bring them over to home. Absolutely. That won't yeah. work because the uh, customs are there really good and will find it and maybe you go them or can stay them for a longer time in Brazil yeah. just for free. Uh, free hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but I don't know if all people will like it. Not many stars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe yours as a star. <laughs> well, that leads me to my next point. With all these different collecting trips and stuff like that that you've been on, every time you go somewhere, there's, you can plan as much as you want. You can pack and make sure everything's good. Is, do you have any really, for, the, for these guys out here, do you have any really funny or something that happened on one of your collecting trips that's just so weird that you couldn't plan for this, but you, you sit back down and you just got to kind of laugh at it? Uh, there, were, there were several things. Uh, for example, we were at Rio Tapajos, and okay, I'm not a really a small, thin guy. We have met there uh, some um, boys from the uh, village where we have uh, made our camp and we have asked them if they, can, if they have a boat and can bring us to the next rapid. Okay, they come with a boat um, and put a camping chair on the boat where I can sit on <laughs> like, like a throne. Because you can, it's just a dugout otherwise, right? No, I, I, like, like, like a throne, I have to sit there and uh, all the others were going. That was really crazy. You have pictures of that, I hope. Uh, I hope not. Because <laughs> most of the time I have taken the pictures and that was a good thing. <laughs> But, but also, uh, we were uh, on the road um, with uh, Ingo Seidel, a good friend of mine, <laughs> and um, we were standing in front of a biotope, and there was uh, a little uh, wasp <coughs> in this side. A little what? Wasp. Uh, the larger bees. Oh, wasp! How wasp, big was wasp. it? Oh, I think this size. Holy, well, wasps are, that's and, why I was confused. Wasps and, are this and big. And Ingo has seen it. Was going back, and there, then comes an earthquake. Okay, maybe not really an earthquake, but it feels like. <laughs> and it was not so easy to catch then any more fish in the by the top. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't get stung. No, 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 no. No, he was just falling outside of the biotope, but it was really yeah. heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and so our several things all happens on this tour. And you can never plan, you know, you just no, gotta, like, no, things no. are gonna happen. Like, that's like people, um, when, when they worry about stingrays in the wild, yeah. it's not, it, it might be extremely painful if you got stung by a stingray. That's not yeah. the problem. It's gonna be the 40 hours on a dugout boat to get you to a doctor. That's gonna be the problem yeah, for you, yeah, I think. Yes. So, yeah, no. Nope. If you're gonna travel and you're gonna to go to these areas and try and find these fish and all these different, there's there's probably millions of fish that we haven't even seen yet. Yes, of there's course. There's so many of areas course. that are just so remote that nobody can get to, so. Yeah, but, it makes no sense that companies uh, send fishermen to there because in the moment the market is, is so bad, especially in uh, Europe, the people are not willing to pay good money for the fish. Yeah. And so the exporters have no reason to pay much money to send fishermen in really uh, remote areas. And the farther they go, the more cost it's going to yeah. be to get them and bring them back. And when they don't get the money back, it makes no sense to do this. Yeah. So they just concentrate on the fish close by them that are good to get, good to sell. And yeah, so that's the reason why at the moment not many new fish comes from Brazil. So you can keep going? What? No end in sight. You're going to keep going after these fish? 
I hope so. That's cool. Now, before we wind up, let's let, let I'll give you a minute. Let's let's talk about L number days because most people in North America don't have a clue of it. What is L number days? Oh, that's that sad. Cause uh, for several years, I uh, <coughs> am a flyer and leaflets here in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, at well, I got my shirt. Yes. And uh, this was from 2013. I don't remember Daniel being at this one. I'm pretty sure that maybe he, he didn't clean his room so his mom wouldn't let him go to L number days in 2013. But we had a good time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, it's a convention that we made there. Uh, uh, in, invite, invented by uh, Ingo Seidel and me. Okay. On a road trip uh, to to some talks, uh, we have got the idea inspired a little by the catfish convention from the U.S. Okay, so this came after that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. First was the catfish convention, and then we have got the idea do something similar in Germany, but a bit more in the, in the German way. Yeah, and um, we are on every odd year, so the catfish convention is on every even year. So that we have, uh, there are okay. also no, no problems with this convention. And they're in the same time frame, aren't they? They're in October? Are they both yeah. in October? Yeah. Okay. But that was because of the uh, participants uh, wanted. We have made at the, one of the last conventions, uh, have uh, given a board that the people can uh, think or can make a marking what they like more, spring okay. or fall. Okay. And it was a head-to-head -head race of, I think, uh, 80 to 1. Oh! All right. <laughs> so other people want to have it in fall. Well, you're, so. Germany's in the same sort of, not maybe not as cold as here, but we are in, when we're in northern climates, most of our aquariums and hobbies and all that stuff is after, once the kids go back to school, summer's over, you know, and then we get ramped up and we yeah. get back into our fish yeah. camping again. And that's, so that, that makes sense. That, that's what does the people also. Um, this convention itself uh, starts on the Friday. Officially, we start on Friday evening. We have uh, on Friday one big talk. The last years it was uh, Leandro Sousa, the professor from uh, Altamira in Brazil. Uh, his talks were all time really, really great. Well, I've seen the list of the speakers you guys bring in. You know, yeah. they're, 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 they're the world's best. Every yeah. year, it's just every yeah. year you're bringing in the best of the best all the time. Yeah, and we are also mm -hmm. looking uh, for new guys. Uh, just Leandro, uh, he's, he's uh, no, in, in the meantime, a part of the convention. Yeah. He's there, I think, from the second convention. Now we have the sixth convention and he's all the time there and it's a really great guy. He's learned also a lot. This time he will give uh, the first brilliant talk from a scientist. Because what he have all learned in, uh, at the conventions, now we want to give a little back. Yeah. And he's really happy about that, that he not only have to give a scientific talk, but also a breeder's talk. That is, makes him really, really happy. And I think that will be a really good time. We have then on a Saturday also uh, lots of talks, but also a lot of time to uh, yeah, socialize with each other, because it's uh, really nice to meet people from all over the world. Uh, the last year, the uh, guy from the, with the uh, longest distance was from New Zealand that came over oh. just for this weekend, <laughs> but also from Singapore, from the US, from South America, oh. so uh, several European countries, and that's really nice. The last years we were between 150 and 200 uh, participants, and yeah, it's, it's a really great convention, so I will, be happy, I will be happy to invite you to come over you really enjoy the time and the only thing is you don't it's better when you don't go too early to bed cause in the nights that's when the it's, it's yeah. really really long uh, usually when I go between 4 and 5 to bed and go then at uh, 7 to breakfast uh, <laughs> of, of, often I meet them uh, then some guys uh, they are still sitting there and drinking beer and yep. uh, but that's the times, that's when you're going to get those experiences. You're going to share that knowledge yeah. with people of the same interest. You're yeah. going to be sharing and learning from each other all the time. Yeah. I, I've gone to many, many conventions, as you know, and stuff. And that's, it's true. The longer you stay up, the, you know, it's, it's only one weekend. Take in as much as you can. Yeah. Now, yes. we'll put up the flyer. We'll put the flyer up into the presentation yeah. Yeah. and stuff that like that. So right. you guys will have all the information. The dates are October... Uh, the 11th to October the 13th. Okay. It's the second, second weekend in October. And it's where? And uh, it's by Hanover. Okay. Hanover in Germany has an own airport. Okay. So, uh, but no direct flights from the US. 
but That's by true. Frankfurt or the other uh, yeah. big big uh, no process worries. like Amsterdam, Paris, and so on are well uh, to uh, well easy to reach from Hanover. Yeah. Now one other thing, one last thing is. You do. You have your own business on the side, yes. and you do. You do all the printing for the shirts, all the, the yes. brochures. You do all that stuff for the company. But one thing that you you've only just recently launched, and you brought for me uh, this amazing picture. It's a. It's it's one of. I don't think it's exactly this picture, but it's the same species. Yeah. And it's printed on a sheet of aluminum, and it's yes. it's, it's it's just an absolutely breathtaking piece of artwork and stuff like that. Talk like maybe tell them like we'll, we'll put the website up there and I want people to be able to go and at least just see all the all that the stuff that you offer because it's not just you you have a whole bunch of other contract photographers that have given you all sorts of nature photos and everything and they're all super high quality yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. Should, anything you want to talk about on that or is it should yeah. we just put the web page up or the um it was just an idea that I've got uh, some years ago because uh, I'm working with printing products and um, make several printed products for other companies and I've seen, got this material in my hand yep. then I thought, okay, it should be an idea to make some pictures on it and then I tried and see, wow, they're really great and so I offer the pictures on brushed aluminium uh, where the color white is not printed and then every part of the fish that is usually white the uh, brush aluminium looks through and so you get a really great metallic effect. It's, it's got a shimmer. It's just yeah. stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other option is also to print it on acrylic glass so you have a high high contrast uh, picture yeah. and you can also It looks like it's already it from framed. Behind. It looks like it's behind glass already. Yeah. 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 And so that are the both uh, main, main options that you can choose. But also I have uh, several different posters uh, from Plecos. That, yeah, I think uh, we have one of the people. big posters went yeah. here up and they're big. They're big poster too. Yeah, it's a real deep, high quality deep, paper deep, and stuff. Deep, easy in A1, that's uh, around 80 to 60 centimeter. Yeah. And yeah, it's a 250 or 300 gram paper that you don't get a really a kind of toilet paper, but yeah. real good quality. Yeah. No, they were nice, heavy, well built. Of course, I don't like to uh, sell cheap, uh, cheap, uh, shitty stuff. Yeah. And everything that, that I sell, first I tested it by myself, if I like it or not. I have also some other options of the pictures that I check in the moment if the people will like it and if I get enough positive response. Yeah. I will put it also in the shop. But it depends on uh, what the yep. people uh, give me, what feedback I get. That's awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate it, Andy. That was an awesome time. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, my friend. <laughs>